just competitiveness the way we define it, which includes improving the standard of living of the average American, is the fundamental issue facing this country right now. We have to treat the disease. Right now what they've been doing is treating the symptoms. 10,000 people a day or else we'll retire for the next 17 years on the Social Security Medicare. That means you lose revenues, relatively, and you increase expenses. As we pay off all of that debt and the obligations, we're gonna be squeezing out uh, spending on the future. This is a problem. I mean, this is, this is gonna make Massachusetts less competitive as we you know, struggle with this kind of burden. This is a structural problem, this is a serious problem. But we deeply believe it's a solvable problem. The more we make this problem local, the more solvable the problem seems. If we work locally and almost ignore what's going on in Washington, we can make a real big difference. That's why we're here. That's why the school is here. You will not leave here today without an offsetting dose of optimism. The idea is that of a commons, that every company to be productive has to draw from some shared resources. We're going to focus on Boston which among the regions in the country has been one of the most successful in maintaining its commons. There's a pool of talent and expertise that historically has been here, and it's an, it's an essential thing for us that it remain here, and that continues to turn out talented young potential employees for us. America has a lot of assets, as we do in the Boston area, but they don't mean anything if they're unconnected. I believe for America to be more competitive, it must be more collaborative. It starts with businesses. Public investment from the state will only go to programs that have the collaboration among industry partners. At Bunker Hill, we've been able to work with a highly innovative group of CEOs. They're acting in unison. They're acting in concert. This program takes our students in their interested fields of study, places them in the workplace. We, for our part of the deal, offer a three credit hour course that helps our students become appropriate corporate citizens. What we need is a strong pipeline into our best businesses of young adults who are trained and ready and professional to meet the needs of our economy here. We bring those young adults into now 12 cities across the country and for six months they learn attitudinal, behavioral and communication skills. We place more than a hundred young people who have come from the most isolated pockets of poverty with millions and millions of dollars going back into Dorchester, Roxbury, Mattapan, East Boston. Collaboration is a fundamental element of the competitiveness. Perception plays part of this game. Raise your hand if you have a college degree. Keep it up if you got it between the ages of 18 and 22. If you ask that same question of any 100 adults in America today, eight hands would be up. Wow. Eight hands would be up in the country. Half the people who go to college in America work full time. We have to see it as a concomitant process of feeding your belly and feeding your brain, of doing credit worthy and pay worthy tasks at the same time. Only through these kinds of partnerships will we be successful in turning around some, what, what are some very disturbing trends? We have always led in higher ed. How do we lead its uh, reimagination? We have more young people per capita in this city, ages 20 to 34, than any other city in the country. You know, we hear so often this notion of we're in the sort of the age of MOOCs, the age of the MOOC. And I would argue that, in fact, we're in the moment of the MOOC. The massively open online course is just the current expression of what is a much larger trend. Finally, the ability to unite technology, the internet, and how we understand from science how learning takes place all into one package. That's a phenomenal opportunity. So what it means in terms of competitiveness is it may be possible to completely uh, change our attitudes toward learning, make it a lifelong process for all of our citizens. That's why uh, we're excited, particularly about the partnership between MIT and Harvard that created edX. We need to transform how we think about education. It doesn't just have to come from the institutions. It's not about simply facing out into the world. It's also about how does the creation of these online learning materials transform what we do on campus. It's additionally exciting to have um, our city government and our state government really behind us and supporting us and working with us. An embracing of a truly experimental and entrepreneurship attitude towards how we build these things 
release them into the world in a variety of different ways, adapt them in different ways, and assess what works. Allowing a city like Boston to have new reasons for folks to come together. This project fundamentally is about action. Every single person in this room can affect U.S. competitiveness in a meaningful way. I believe that I should give as much as possible back to the community. We have a mentorship program, both internally and external to the company. I was in Waltham High School this morning helping teach kids how to do job interviews, as an example. And our job and our commitment as an institution is we are going to do everything we can uh, to provide the tools, the technology, the ideas, the insights, and the convenings to see if we can get the business community, our alumni, and many others to actually engage in this issue. We see a hunger in the business community to actually do something, and things are happening.